Theater is a form of art that combines both physical performance and script, and as a popular form of art, many new types of theater have developed to fit growing demands of our population that have always been influenced by art and entertainment. However, many critical issues have been brought forward to society's attention regarding art, and among these, gender proves to be an issue that continually raises questions of equality among males and females. In theater, males still dominate much of what circulates in our world of entertainment today. According to an online source, The Stage, male writers heavily outnumber women writers in British musicals. In fact, The Stage notes the ratio of male to female writers in British musical theater may be as uneven as 9 to 1. From famous male writers such as Andrew Lloyd Webber, Stephen Sondheim, Richard Rogers, and Oscar Hammerstein, there has been a precedent set for amazing works in musical theater to be a male-dominated field. In fact, it is even said 91% of musicals have a score written by male composers, and only 4 out of 118 musicals running over a 10-year period have had scores entirely written by a female composer. In the clip presented, the musical Cats by Andrew Lloyd Webber uses movement techniques such as implied line and locomotor action to draw the audience's attention to the movements of the character's face and entire body. Still, while a noteworthy performance, this musical is an example of the male-dominated musical theater genre. However, certain females are making headway to bring a greater sense of gender equality to this popular form of live entertainment. For example, Sarah Bareilles is a female composer as well as a singer, actress, and author who has jumped to fame and taken one huge step forward for female composers in her musical theater piece, Waitress. Some significant achievements of this musical are the fact that it had Broadway's first all-female creative team, and at the same time, Waitress set the record for the most money earned in previews at the Brooks Atkinson Theater. Sarah Bareilles' Waitress has been a huge success, as even a 2016 Times article acknowledged that the women of Waitress are changing Broadway. Through this amazing work, the idea of female composers of musicals has launched far forward and achieved great success, which, in turn, is slowly eliminating part of the ever-prevalent gender gap. In addition to musical theater, traditional theaters such as plays are also no stranger to the roles gender play. According to americantheater.org, in the 2015-2016 season, with a production of 250 plays at 52 theaters, only 25% were written by women and 36% were directed by women. This same study also reveals that company members, actors, artistic directors, directors, lighting set, playwrights, and sound positions are all also male-dominated fields, with costume positions being the only area where females outnumber males. With the introduction of these facts, it becomes evident that although some progress has been made to achieve greater gender equality within the world of theater, there is still a long way to go. When searching for the most popular female artists, there are only two that are immediately known, and they are Georgia O'Keeffe and Frida Kahlo. Both have been dead for at least 50 years, so why do we not have more knowledge of the more recent female artists? Female artists are highly underrepresented in the visual art community, even though they account for 51% of all visual artists. Though they account for the majority of the visual artists in the world, women do not get their art displayed as often as men. Only 30% of works displayed in commercial galleries are those made by women. When concerning the ability for female artists to make money from their paintings, we encounter the fact that women make significantly less than their male counterparts. The most money a woman's painting has ever sold for was $44.4 million, and that was Georgia O'Keeffe's Jimson Weed. $44.4 million is a lot of money to be made from a painting, but when you compare it to the most expensive male painting ever sold, it is a very drastic difference. Another big problem encountered when searching for famous female artists is that the f there has never been a female director in any of the top three museums in the world. This could be the root of the problem, as female directors would do their best to have accurate representation of each gender. The big question is, why are female paintings not as well known as males? When looking at paintings, you aren't able to tell what gender painted them, so why are females still so underrepresented? in galleries and museums. The process to get work into a museum is a long one, as the museum's curator has to make studio visits and get a good understanding of the artist's intention with the artwork of interest. 
This ensures that men and women do not have an equal opportunity as the anonymity of the artist's gender does not remain. This could be the reason for so many male artists being displayed over female artists. There is still a remarkable amount of prejudice concerning women in the art community. When we think of the most well-known and popular music artists currently, the first singers that pop into most minds are those such as Ariana Grande, Cardi B, and Taylor Swift, just to name a few. But when it comes to music and the arts, we see an uncanny amount in the lack of gender diversity. According to the National Republic Radio, when it comes to songwriters, only 12% are female, and, perhaps most egregiously, only 2% of 651 producers are women. The music we have here today varies greatly in genre, tempo, and dynamics, but unfortunately, the gender statistics associated with music does not vary at all. And furthermore, with award shows like the Grammys, this lack of gender diversity is extremely prevalent. As Afro mentioned, in the media today, singers like Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Adele, Ariana Grande are constantly flooding the headlines, and they're easily amongst the most popular singers at this time. But despite this, the majority of awards at the Grammys almost always go to men. For example, of the 899 individuals who have been nominated for the last six Grammy ceremonies, an outstanding 90.7% of those were men, and only 9.3% were women. These numbers prove an industry largely dominated by men, and hopefully in the near future these numbers will shift to a more even proportion, as women do contribute just as much to the music industry as men do, despite the minuscule amount of recognition that they receive. The 2018 Grammy Awards was dominated by men Sunday night. As we previously reported, Alessia Caro was the only female artist to actually win an award during the televised ceremony. Now, only nine awards are handed out on stage. The rest are awarded before the telecast. In total, women or female-fronted bands won just 17 awards out of the dozens that were handed out. Most notably, SZA, who was the most nominated woman this year, went home empty-handed. Specifically, there is a gender inequality between female bands and male bands. According to an interview by MTV to the popular girl band Little Mix, they stated that it is a little harder for their gender to break through. They continued to discuss how it is hard for female groups to break through without having a platform. Band member Jesse Nelson even said, we were lucky that we had X Factor as a platform to show off our personalities. Every Saturday and Sunday, people got to know us as individuals and know what we were like as friends and how close we were. With girl bands who haven't got that platform, it's hard. Going back in time, according to GroovyHistory.com, women can love music every bit as much as men. The challenge is though, that female groups are less likely to stand on their own without male group members. Over the years, band and or music groups consisting of only women have come and gone. The same can also be said of male groups, but the fact remains that the girl groups, as they were built early on, seem to have a much shorter lifespan. Personally, going through my own memories and knowledge, I realize that when I think of musical bands, I think mostly of The Beatles, One Direction, The Temptations, and The Backstreet Boys. Once I really start thinking, I might think of The Dixie Chicks, Pussycat Dolls, TLC, or Destiny's Child but the male bands always come to mind first because it seems like they're more well-known throughout history or simply just more popular. In no way or form do I consider myself a credited critic as I realize that someone with musical knowledge might have a broader knowledge in female groups, but my lack of knowledge is a good demonstration on what most people might think of female bands. Overall, gender inequality is as real today as it was yesterday. The truth is that as long as there is inequality, 
and society as a whole, there will be inequality in music. Gender inequality can be seen in all types of dance, and it is against both men and women. Most cases of gender inequality in dance can be seen as males and females are fit their roles that are expected by society. Therefore, females will do whatever it is they deem most feminine. This may be by wearing high heels or tight dresses or other revealing clothing to make themselves seem more physically attractive, and this often takes away from the elements of the dance. Men, on the other hand, are not supposed to dress in any revealing way. They often wear clothes that cover their entire bodies, unlike their female counterparts. And whenever there is any lifting movement, it is typical that the male is to lift the female. This is because the man is supposed to seem more strong and the female is supposed to seem, fe seem feminine. But why is this? There's no rule saying a female cannot be the one to lift the male. Yes, females may have to work harder, but that doesn't mean that they cannot be the ones to do the lift. In the first video, you will see that the man and the female in the video are both very much fitting into their gender roles as the female is lifted by the man and she is wearing more revealing clothes, clothing than the man. The second video I show is one that actually breaks the gender stereotypes as there are men dancing in high heels to the Spice Girls and other things you would typically see a woman doing, not a man. Overall, gender inequality can still be seen in many forms of art today such as theater, visual art, music, and dance. Although we have presented some examples that show both females and males are making strides to defy gender roles and stereotypes cemented into society, statistically, we have also given evidence that gender inequality is still very much present in the arts today.